gonna check in the group first. <laughs> um, so if anyone is here watching, we are live here today with Anita, who is gonna be interviewing me on my binge eating journey and um, how far I've come and basically what happened to me and how I solved it. So I'm just checking okay. in the group. We are we live are in the group, live yes. Today with Anita. <laughs> Right, so if anyone is watching on the live, give me a hashtag live in the comments. I think the comments are up, so they should display. And if anyone's watching on the replay, just so we know you've been here and we know you found this useful, give us a hashtag replay in the comments as well. But yeah, Anita, just introduce yourself and tell us who you are and what you do. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Firstly Harry, for having me on here. Uh, my name's Anita. And I work with women to help them lose weight uh, using weight loss CBT. Um, it's really important, like listen to Harry's story. It's so important to get it out there and all the work that he does, it's amazing because when it comes to like eating disorders or binge eating, it needs to be spoken about. And the support that he provides is absolutely valuable. So hearing his journey and getting it out there, it's, it's amazing. It's different. Yes, and just to emphasize that, a lot of people are suffering with emotional eating, binge eating, however you'd like to label it, but it's often a, a hidden problem. And yeah. for me, I know you're gonna ask me questions in a few minutes. For me, a lot of people didn't realize that it was a problem. In actual fact, they thought it was funny at some sort of um, instances where I'd like eat a lot of food or people would offer me stuff. And I would be eating like everyone's uh, like leftovers and uh, like six pieces of cake when like there was a birthday and stuff. And they thought it was like a circus act when in actual fact, I'm laughing, but when it comes back to it, it's, it's a problem. And we'll go into that in a few minutes. So yeah, yeah thanks for the intro, Anita. And I know that's a quick intro, but just tell us a little bit more about you and like what that actually involves and like the kind of people you help as well just before we get started so um i help women lose weight using cbt the reason why is because my background is that i was diagnosed with anorexia at the age of 16 um and throughout my life i've been battling eating disorders and i also um rub shoulders with binge eating and i got addicted to numbers and so when people are trying to lose weight now, one of the common traits that I see is that everything's number based, like calories or exercise. And for someone like me, that's a really big trigger. And so I've formulated using CBT to help people lose weight that get addicted to numbers so that everything that I do is about helping people lose weight without the numbers. It's about just intuitive eating, um, getting back to basics with eating so understanding your body understanding your hunger cues and then losing weight in a way that works for you not you know a diet plan and here's an exercise plan and off you go it's not generic it's not a one size fits all because it can't be exactly and that really resonates as well actually because a lot of people feel that they need to do something complicated to lose weight because they failed yeah. in the past but actually it. it does mean like bringing it back to basics is not wrong and actually yet better results. A lot of people are scared to bring it back to something less specific, less extreme, but it actually does, it does work. So yeah. Yeah. So I know it you've is... got a load of questions for me. Yeah. <laughs> Let's, yeah I... dive, dive into the questions. I do indeed. So Harry, what was your journey? So tell us a bit more about your journey. Cool. So I've been kind of like in the health and fitness industry for a little while and I followed a lot of the things that people in the industry do. So one of the big things is calorie counting and calories like count obviously. So to lose weight, you need to be eating fewer calories than your body needs, but you don't necessarily need to count calories to get results. And the problem starts to happen is that as you mentioned, you start to get addicted to the numbers. And these can have like various um, impacts. So a couple of them are the fact that you lose sort of trust in yourself and everything is kind of numbers based. You have to be following the numbers to actually live day to day life and you, you don't trust yourself anymore. Also, 
you don't trust your body. So the hunger signals you have, you are not listening to because you're looking at how many calories you've got. So you're like, oh, I've got four, 500 calories here. I'll have some food. I'm not hungry, but it's in my schedule and it won't make an impact. And so you start to listen less to your body. And in actual fact, you can be completely, uh, yeah, sort of dictated by those numbers. And then a third thing, actually, that a lot of people don't realize is that this level of precision and control creates a lot of stress. And it not, might not be something you're aware of, but it's background stress that builds up over time and can often lead to binges. So a lot of people, they are releasing stress through eating. So if you are extra stressed, if you're stressing yourself out, then naturally you're going to feel those cravings because you want to release that stress. And the way you've learned that is um, through food. So yeah, just to like not go off too much of a tangent on my story, but I basically had this problem with binge eating. I'd lost sort of my hunger signals. I was just eating loads of food. The big thing with me was that because I'm in the health and fitness industry and I understand calories and I understand like how to keep my body weight down. I was not actually that overweight, but I had like that consuming part in my mind of thinking about food 24 seven, the confidence that not enjoying food, not enjoying life, not being present and just being consumed and overwhelmed by the counting calories, counting, looking at numbers, even counting steps and movement. And it made me do silly things. Um, just an example, I remember one day, um, so the My Fitness Pal app, which a lot of people use to count calories, it was yeah. down and I'd made my, I'd made my, my dinner and I couldn't put it in the app. So I sat there like, I can't eat this food because I don't know how many calories are in it. <laughs> and like, looking back now, that, that sounds stupid and it sounds silly, but like stuff like that, which is completely like this, like the most ridiculous behavior. And yeah, it's this anxiety around food and the thing of, if I don't know what's in it, I can't eat it. Or what if I go over my calories? What if I'm under them? How many have I got left? And it's all this thinking and extra stress that, that yeah, like overwhelms you. So uh, that's a brief kind of like introduction to like my story. And basically it was taking my mind off actually my focus for the day. I wasn't present and yeah, it, it was just consuming me. And so, yeah, that, that's in a nutshell. <laughs> I think that you've hit it there as well. Like it is time consuming when your constant focus is on food and it's on, you know, constantly what am I eating next or what did I just eat or this, that and the other. It takes up a lot of your time, doesn't it? So how did you feel like it was affecting you and your life? So just day to day, like, like let's start like breakfast. I get up and have breakfast and like I'd make my breakfast and I'd be weighing everything. So, um, so I'd be like weighing each individual item I was having for breakfast and then logging into the app. And that's just like extra things to think about and extra stress. And that would be then like the next meal the same and then the next meal the same. And what I do as well is I would save up calories. I'd be very clever with my calories because I want to eat loads of like rubbish. And so I knew that to be able to eat loads of rubbish in the evening there'd be two things i could do i could eat lots of like high volume foods so like low calorie vegetables and stuff and also do lots of movements so lots of steps so i would like spend time doing steps in the day extra steps and i just eat let's say like bland food and as much vegetables as possible to like fill me up and not really enjoy it just to in the evening have like a thousand calories to eat of cookies and ice cream and, and chocolate. And it was just that cycle like every day and thinking about this food and not being present in my everyday life. I, I, I just remember like another example, I was uh, out with some friends and obviously like I would, if I'd had a drink, I'd log the drink in the app as well. And I knew I had calories left over, which I wanted to use to, eat some chocolate at home and some of my friends wanted to stay longer and have a few more drinks but all I could think about was going home and eating this chocolate I had at home so I wasn't really present I was just waiting to go home 
I didn't want to like leave them there, but at the same time, I didn't want to have another drink and let's say use those calories on a drink. I wanted to have the chocolate alone at home. And so it started yeah, doing stuff like that, which obviously is not healthy behavior. No, it's not. So when you're talking about that, why do you think that was a problem? And why did you want to fix it? So obviously, like I said, it was taken away from my day to day life. If you're focused on food, and you can't be present with anything else, like your friends, your family, your your job, like your hobbies, it's all revolving around food. I've spoke to people before. Uh, and this happened to me as well. Like when you go on holiday, if you've disconnected your hunger signals, if you've um, if you don't trust yourself around food, if you need to weigh things, if you need to count things, and you go on holiday, where you can't sometimes, like out and about or situations where you can't, then it often creates this like mindset of, oh, I can't do it today. So I'll just like have days off the diet or I won't count while I'm on holiday. And you just go completely the opposite of oh, I'm just eating everything. And because you don't feel the hunger signals, you're just eating and overeating. And then like I know you said specifically for me, but often people will get guilty around this because then they're like, oh, why did I do that? I've gone back on my diet. I've, I've kind of um, done things I said I wouldn't do. I feel terrible. Why did I eat all those things? And yeah, for me specifically, like throughout my day, it was just the constant thought about food or I was obviously working from home. So um, it's easy to weigh stuff and easy to, um, easy to count things. And I've always worked from home, so it's easy to do that. So I wasn't in environments where I didn't know what was in my food. But it was that thing of if I ever did go somewhere, then what do I do? Because you have to have this very like high level of control and precision. Um, when speaking to people with these situations, it's a common yeah. thing of I like to be controlled. I like to be in a safe environment. I don't like going on holiday. I don't like going out. I don't like um, being influenced by other people or um, someone gives me a cake or something. What do I do? Those kind of things. Because yeah. It's all around being precise and knowing exactly how many calories in it, how much it weighs, all those kind of things. And just like a side note on that, we're talking about calories, but it's not just calories. It's stuff like points counting, sins counting, all those kind of things as well. And yeah. um, so, yeah, not just the calories. Uh, I think we've actually got one person watching at the moment. So if you do have any questions while we're going along, feel free to uh, comment. It should appear for us. Uh, so, yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, I I get that. Like when you're talking about it now as well, you can still feel the emotion that's attached. And so when did you realize that this was something that needed to be fixed? It was a good few years, to be honest, because I felt in control because like I was not overweight and I felt kind of like, let's say, safe because yeah. I was controlling everything, calories and weighing food. And I felt like I was in control. I felt like everything was going as it should be. But then I realized, well, there were several things. Like, there's a couple of events. I, I mentioned a few already. There was an event um, I went at Christmas time a few years ago. And it was a, a family village hall Christmas dinner where it was like a local community. And there was loads of like older people there. And basically there was a Christmas dinner and a lot of the old people that love baking and bake desserts. So there was like 25 different selection of desserts. And so when it came around to desserts, like everyone had a dessert and you could have seconds if you wanted to, because there was loads of it. And I ended up having like sevenths and people, like, people there were like, oh my God, you're a hero. You're, you're having all our desserts. We love you because you're trying all our desserts. Yeah. and like I said before there's this like positive side of people think oh you can eat all this food and still look okay not be overweight but it's like did I actually enjoy those and what was it that made me need to eat those what was that the feeling the urge and the craving and the um the compulsion and so yeah so I realized like several different events like that there was another event where I went out for a meal with friends it was to one of those like buffet things you know like the chinese buffets yeah. and i had about 10 friends there and because i was 
repeating uh, because I was having like so many different um I forgot the word now um second and thirds and fourths and fifths of like plates yeah. of food it got to kind of like two hours there and some friends said oh we've got to leave sorry like we've had our food and like we don't want to stay any longer yeah. <laughs> and because I was having so much and it's those little things that add up and make you think oh actually like, is this normal and so it's just the constant thought about food and the need to eat so much also rubbish and being able to fit it into your day cleverly which I was able to do it's not a balanced diet because if you're eating 50 percent rubbish processed food because you're clever you're doing lots of exercise and you're eating lots of low calorie vegetables doesn't mean it's good but you just found a trick or a way to make it work for you doesn't mean you you solve the problem which like is quite important to understand yeah so when you realized that hang on a second this isn't isn't normal and you know what i'm going through i need to get support what was your first step so for me the big thing that kind of happened was I'm trying to think now um realizing that actually it was a problem because like i said it, it wasn't an obvious problem to other yeah. people or to me to start with i thought i was in control so for me it was just the journey of learning about how the mind works and what cravings actually are and how those actually link into binge eating and how the, the need and precision the need and precision for control around food actually can lead around uh, lead back to binge eating so things like needing to weigh food to the nearest gram having points targets to hit having calorie targets to hit the amount of stress and overwhelm that that creates without really realizing it and so i studied this and i went into the psychology of it and i realized that diets are two things they're yes they are the eating part and that's important but for the eating part you have to bring it back and make it very simple because you don't need to have this high level of precision and control for food yeah some people might do like an athlete before um like competing but just for a short period of time or like weight classes like boxers need to hit a certain weight class but again a certain amount of time they'll do that for but for a general person like me or anyone else it's just like eating in a simple way portion sizes that are like visually controlled taking away this like measuring and um counting points and things and then also understanding how cravings work and what craving actually is. So most people don't really realize, uh, so I'll explain it for anyone watching this, um, to use an analogy, or well, not an analogy, just a demonstration with my hands. So if you imagine you are feeling a certain way, so let's say like you're feeling this way and you wanna feel another way. So let's say this is negative emotions, you're bored, you're stressed, you're overwhelmed, whatever, you're feeling bad, right? And you wanna feel good you want to have a positive feeling food is just the the vehicle the like the link between these two things so it's not really the food you want it's the change in feeling that's very important to understand for people and so it's the the gate the link the like the connection between a bad feeling and a good feeling and for some people it's other things they use so i was using food a lot of people use food some people use drugs some people use yeah. shopping some people use gambling things like that so basically disempowering things that aren't helpful especially if you have like weight loss goal food is not going to help you if you're constantly being driven by cravings if you're using craving if you're using food to control your your mood and emotional state and just to go into this slightly deeper this is something coming from your unconscious mind your survival part of your brain and so this is the part of the brain that cares about your safety like it wants to keep you alive and so any any like negative emotion like stress overwhelm it's seen as a threat to your body it's like oh what's going on and if you've accidentally taught it through just habit that food is a quick and easy way to change the way you feel then it will use that it's going to give you urges and cravings it wants to make you change the way you feel and so it's similar to let's say you step out in front of a car you don't step out in front of a car and think oh there's a car coming. I should get out of the way. Let's step back. That's yeah. that's your conscious brain. That's your 
um, logical thinking brain, you would be dead, right? So it comes from the survival brain. It makes you jump back. You don't have a choice. You don't think about it. You don't analyze it. It's it's using the quickest and easiest way to sort of get you out of danger. Um, the same as if you touch something hot in the kitchen, you place your hand on a hot pan or something, you move away quickly. And you haven't thought about that. You haven't thought logically, oh, that's hot. So I'm going to move my hand. It's coming from your survival brain. So it's the same thing with the cravings. They're coming from this survival part of your brain. And it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you. You just learn that that's a quick and easy way to change the way you feel. So basically, the, the way around this is you need to train yourself or have training to change the way you are getting this positive feeling. So from yeah. this stress and overwhelm to a positive feeling. And so, like I said, things are, that are disempowering external things like food, like drugs, like gambling, like shopping, even like scrolling on the phone or um, watching TV. Of course, these things are fine, but if they are taking away from something else you're meant to be doing, and it's more like an urge to do it, then it's, it's not going to help you. So yeah, does that kind of make sense? Yeah, it does. And the the way that you've explained it, like the examples that you've given, it's true. And it is about, you know, you need to change the way you feel. And that's because when you've said that, it resonates a lot with me. Like my trigger foods, I remember now when I used to feel a certain way, I used to actually go toward that trigger food without actually realizing it. And it was kind of like, unconsciously you're doing it. Like it's subconscious, isn't it? Like you don't realize but yet you, it just happened. So knowing that, what did you do then to change? Or how did you change your unconscious? Which was so, a subconscious. So very good question. And this is something that's hard to go into specifically, but I'll explain it in the best way I can. So like I previously said, it's about this change in feeling. So you have a negative yeah. feeling and a positive feeling and you want to basically change the way you feel. Food is currently the way you're doing that. And so it's a training process. And so what I do with my clients specifically is make this an internal internal feeling change. So the biggest problem I see is that people don't know how to regulate their emotions internally. Yeah. They do it with external things. Like I said, food, drugs, gambling, whatever. And People have a power to change their way, the way they feel, basically what they focus, on, basically by what they focus on. So I'll use an example because a lot of people will do it accidentally all the time, but they don't realize this is something they can learn. So the, the example I like to use is winning the lottery. So imagine you win the lottery. You've had the worst day in the world and you just feel shit and um, you're tired, you're stressed and whatever. Imagine you find out you win the lottery. How do you feel? Happy, relieved, excited. Yeah, and you start to imagine what you're going to do, right? You start to imagine, yeah. oh, I'm going to get this and get that, how my life is going to be, I can give up my job or whatever you want in life. And so why does that happen? It's because you start to picture in your mind positive things. You start to internally yeah. generate pictures and images of something exciting that you want. You haven't got the money yet, haven't got those things yet, yeah. but it's where your focus is. And so this is an accidental way of changing the way you feel just through, um, yeah, just internally. And then let's say that actually then you found out that you didn't actually win the lottery, it was an accident. You've still done that in your mind just from the idea that you won the lottery. Yeah. And so all it is, is being able to train yourself to internally give yourself positive experiences without the need for food. And yeah. It's, it's a fairly simple process, but it requires like a bit of understanding about how the brain works and how to train it. But it's fairly simple. It's one of those things that unless you actually have understood, like I said, how the brain works and how that part of the brain deals with, um, let's say, language. So, again, I try not to go too deep into these things because sometimes it can get too complex. But your conscious brain, the conscious part of the brain, deals with words and language and logic, whereas the unconscious brain, the survival part of the brain, it deals with emotions and repetition and habits. 
So being able to, let's say, talk to it in that way yeah. and training it to change the way it deals with stress and overwhelm is basically the route to, to go. So <laughs> quite a long and kind of intertwined answer, but that's kind of like what you need to think about with that. So compare yourself now. So when you were going through your journey and how you are now, what's the difference in feeling? What's the difference in your world now? Oh, so much. And just a, like a quick side note beforehand, sometimes you can be in a problem and you become numb to it because you've been doing it for so long. So I speak to a lot of people that have had problems for 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years plus. And logically you will start to disassociate from it because you don't want to feel these feelings anymore. So if you can forget how it should be to live yeah. proper life. And so, yeah, like when, when I solve this problem, basically that freedom from not having to count things, having just a meal and choosing something that I actually wanted rather than yeah. specifically choosing like a load of mushrooms because they were the lowest calories and things like that. And just enjoying more variety of foods because again another side note with calorie counting a lot of th things that people do is eat the same foods every day because it's very simple and e easy to fit in and you don't have to think so much yeah um so i was able to enjoy a more variety of foods and just like save them more and get rid of this overwhelm and stress about counting weighing thinking about food the whole time also reducing my activity because i was doing a ridiculous amount of steps i was doing like 120 130,000 steps a week to just get more um, calorie burn. So yeah. allow myself more calories. And that meant going out and doing lots of walks or stupid stuff. Like if I'd gone somewhere with some friends in the car, I'd be like, oh, it's okay. I'll walk back uh, an hour or so. Uh, and that waste, not only waste time, but waste time with the friends, but also it, it's silly because it's unnecessary. Yeah. Now I don't need to do stuff like that. Have that time back. And like biggest thing is all like I can focus on what I'm doing like obviously I help women with emotional eating problems now and I can take all this knowledge and what I have learned to help other people do it as well so I've helped my sister do it so she suffered with emotional eating problems like a lot of people do and she had um she's had her first child and she put on a lot of weight a lot of weight and so I was able to help her lose she lost like five and a bit stone in um just over i think nine or ten months and so yeah like these kind of things they have a big impact on people's lives so obviously she had a child she felt more energy she felt like that fear of uh am i going to be healthy in, in the long run that was gone and the thinking about food also like spending more money on food as well you don't spend so much yeah. money on food, but you should still enjoy the food you have and you still enjoy life, have more money left over. And one of the biggest things that people don't realize is that, so when you are emotionally eating, you're undermining yourself the whole time. You're kind of saying, oh, I'm not going to eat this. But then you end up getting the craving and eating it. That undermines yeah. your confidence. So it brings huge confidence living in alignment with your values and being the person that you want to be and showing up as the person you want to be. And you're like, oh, I, I love myself and I trust myself. And um, the way I'm acting and the way I'm behaving is who I want to be. And I'm living in accordance to that. Whereas before, it was like, oh, why have I done this? It's annoying. Today, oh, it'll be the last day. But then tomorrow it happens again. And you kind of like dig away at yourself. So that's a huge change, like the confidence of showing up as who you want to be. Okay. I like that. You briefly touched on it. But what do you think people, or what's the biggest mistake you think people make on their journey to recovery? Cool. So I'm trying to think of the best answer for this because there's quite a few mistakes. But it, it depends on the specific person. But the biggest thing I see is this need to be perfect. Yeah. And so having this high level of precision and control at the same time as well people are driven by what they don't want so for example 
I don't like the way I am. I don't like having low confidence. I don't like the fact that I'm risking my health. I don't like wearing these clothes. I don't like all these things. I hate myself. All those kind of things you say to yourself. And this is not a very exciting reason to, to go on a diet. So you feel obliged to go on a diet. And so you're like, oh, yeah, I hate myself, but I'm going to have to do this diet because I don't, yeah. I don't love myself and um, I need to do it. Like if you get up every day like that, it's like that's not exciting. And that's what drives this thing of as well, needing per to be perfect because um, you think, oh, unless I'm perfect, then I'm not going to get results and I need results. So I need to like rein in. I need to count the calories to, to like the nearest number. I need to do my exercise every day, uh, run whatever, 10,000 miles, <laughs> not 10,000 miles. But, <laughs> um, I, I need to maybe it's January. So maybe I need to cut out sugar or cut out chocolate because that'll get me even quicker results. Yeah. And it's all these things that link back into failing and giving yourself evidence that you failed and believing less in yourself and believing also that actually to get results you need to be even more precise and even more on it so maybe you cut out sugar for two months or cut out sugar and all carbs as well and you can see how this goes down this black hole of then when you don't get results what happens you feel even worse so what do you do next maybe you should be um doing more exercise and cutting your calories even more and you get into this big deep black hole of you don't know what to do and then some people get to a stage I've seen where they're like, I can't diet anymore. I hate it. I just can't do it. I'm going to do intuitive eating instead, which for anyone who doesn't know what intuitive eating is, is complete opposite of I'll just eat what I feel like. But that releases, that will release like the pressure and everything. And you feel so good. But at the same time, how do you currently eat? You're eating and overeating. So you often then gain weight. So yeah, you have a, this release from dieting, but at the same time, you feel like you're putting on weight or you are putting on weight. And sometimes I've seen quite a lot of groups around the internet. It ends up of this, um, oh, I'm trying to say this in a nice way, um, not to offend anyone, but it's okay to be fat groups. And yeah. so the reason I say that is because it's people that have failed so much, and this is like compassion, the fact that they failed so much that they 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 can't try anymore and they're trying to be okay with just being overweight and there's a lot of myths around saying oh yeah it, it's it's not unhealthy to be overweight and it's fine we should all embrace it that kind of thing which i think is a very um uh, dangerous message but it's coming from a place of um desperation because they failed so many times that they just don't know what to do anymore and I think that's also quite important because there's so much out there. And I think it's it's also that because when you when something's not working for you, you think, oh, well, there's something else and you go and try that. And then when that doesn't work, you go and try that. So it is about knowing what is actually out there that is benefiting people because you see so many people that will just quickly churn something out and you know it's, it's all money making and they just want someone to try it and it, it doesn't help and people start to lose trust exactly and to touch on that a lot of people come to me and say to me i've tried everything and yeah. i have a chat to them and see what they've tried but in actual fact all they've done is they've tried the same thing in different yeah. ways so they've tried trying to regulate their calories with a different system so be it Slimming World, Weight Watchers, Herbal Life, Juice Plus, Keto Diet, all that is, is just a different way of regulating your calories. They do it in different ways, right? Counting yeah. points, counting calories, reducing your food by having a shake instead, cutting out carbs. What they haven't done is work on regulating their emotions without use of food, working on where's your motivation coming from? Are you just getting yeah. negative motivation that's just pushing you and then you know, you're making yo-yo dieting happen? And so when I speak to these people, they realize, actually, yeah, I haven't tried everything. I just tried the same thing in different ways. Yeah. So it's, it's a very important point. If anyone is watching, like you can even write this down. Like when I see a diet, is it just another way of eating? And you can try as many ways of eating as you want. If you are being pulled back by cravings, if you are having low motivation, no different way is going to make you um, stop that. You have to tackle what's like really going on. 
And so you haven't tried everything. You've tried one thing. And yeah, it's very important. So I don't know how to say that in a sentence, really. But um, when you're looking for a diet, really make sure it's actually including the stuff you need, right? Yeah. And I think you you mentioned it there, like most diets out there, so the ones that focus on the calorie deficit and all of that, they don't focus on what's showing up. They don't focus on the triggers. They don't focus on the emotions behind it. It is literally just another way for you to control something. So they give you that control and it's like, oh, I'm going to control, you know, something in the way of calories. And like you've touched upon, that doesn't work. Exactly. It do, it's not long lasting, is it? No. And if you think like 100 years ago or less than 100 years ago, we didn't have ways of tracking foods and people could eat healthily. Of course, yeah. the problem we have these days is too much food around. It's very easy to buy. And we've got more money and things like that. Um, but it's not necessary to, to be precise to actually get good results. And trying to think like something to, to help people in terms of like their mindset quickly, because a lot of people say to me, oh, I've tried everything and I feel terrible. And I feel like I still need to do it by myself because I've done this to myself, so I should be able to undo it. Yeah. And a lot of people are holding off from like actually getting real help because they, they feel they should be able to do it themselves. And I just want to, like, again, with compassion, say that you shouldn't be expected to be able to solve your own problem. So to use an analogy, let's say your car breaks down. You may have all the tools in your garage to be able to fix it, but without like the actual knowledge of someone that's gone through the same thing, someone that studied the same thing and help other people get results that you can see then it's going to take a lot longer like you may never solve the problem like you can have that car in a garage uh, on, on the driveway and all the tools you'll be looking at manuals you'll be looking at the internet and be asking on facebook groups what's this how do i do this and it can take you forever and even then you might not get to your you might get lost and some people say of course like the wrong thing so you never actually get to where you want to get to and so yeah like don't feel bad that you're asking for help like it's there's nothing wrong with asking for help so again with anything the first stage is yeah actually i might need some help with this so yeah um yeah like that's very important to understand for a lot of people i like that and i think it is that kind of like you said, people think, oh my God, I've done this to myself, so I'm going to get out of this. And I think you touched upon it right at the beginning. A lot of people don't realise that this is a problem. And often you don't realise that there is someone out there that can help. Um, and like I said before, like, there are so many diets in that. And a lot of them are formulated by people that have never actually gone through the actual process themselves. Or they've never had that journey. So we've spoken about your journey. So then the last thing I've got to ask you is if anyone is watching this and they're thinking, well, do you know what? I need this help. I'm ready to make that change. What's their next steps then? Cool. Um, and before I answer that, I'll give a quick side note because something just came into my head. I'll see a lot yeah. of people offering help with binge eating, emotional eating, but it will be strategies and like coping mechanisms. Yeah. This doesn't solve the problem. It just, it hides the problem. So I'll give some examples. So you'll probably, you'll laugh because these are funny because when you actually hear them, it's like, that is stupid. Um, people say, oh, clean your teeth so you don't want the chocolate or have some chewing gum or go out for a walk or put the whatever in the freezer. Or I've heard people say to me, I go to bed early so I don't don't have the, um, the urge to eat. Or, yeah stupid stuff like that or, or keep everything out of the house these are just coping mechanisms coping coping strategies yeah and these don't work to solve the problem it's like putting a plaster over it for a day or yeah you you're clever like you, you find a way to eat these things if you need to and so it doesn't get rid of the stress and the overwhelm and everything so it's very important to like have a way to do it properly solve the problem rather than just plaster over it so yeah the question um like everyone knows here, like what I do is I help women with emotional eating problems. So my program, the Food Freedom Blueprint, we go 12 weeks basically and train you how to eat properly 
And then, like I explained today, we internally create this new way of um, creating positive emotion. So you can release the fact that you need food to change the way you feel the whole time. Yeah. And also build a positive emotion up, sorry, positive motivation around your goal. So getting up every day, excited to work towards it, not with this, oh, I hate myself, I need to do a diet. Oh, when can I finish it? So you actually yeah. want to continue it. And it's a way of eating that then long term, change of identity, change of who you are. So you become this new person who enjoys life and loves yourself and basically, yeah, like achieves more. So yeah, yeah. if anyone like wants help, I'm happy to have a chat with anyone, like no low pressure, like there's nothing like I'm gonna force you to sign up with me. And in actual fact, I don't know if anyone like everyone is suitable. So it's important for me to have a chat. So I know if people are, are suitable for what I do. So yeah, if anyone does like have um yeah, if anyone is like in a position where they really are at the end of the tether and um want to just chat or understand more about their problem, happy to have a chat. Um while you're here as well i know you do a similar thing you help ladies with um similar problems so like tell us about uh, your program as well Anita. so with my program um the first few sessions are actually delving into the psychology so it's about understanding your relationship with food where it's come from because there's like key milestones that you go through before you know you end up so like when i ended up as an anorexic i didn't realize that it was due to certain events. So the way that we do it is that we focus on these events, we start to uncover this first, and then comes in everything CBT related, which is losing weight in a way we you you start to get your hunger signals back. But we don't ever go into that until we've gone into the why behind it, the why with food, because I've got trigger foods and those trigger foods have come from like childhood and when you start to kind of connect the dots it makes it easier to formulate a plan and I don't do you know one size fits all like yourself it is understanding the individual understanding where you know where their journey started from and then doing a plan for them for what will work with them because everyone exactly. has different goals don't they yes and again, I like side notes. A lot of people will go to like a personal trainer. They have a personal trainer for exercise. Yeah. And their personal trainer will say, oh, I'll do your plan. And they'll write them like a, a list of foods to eat for breakfast, yeah. lunch, and dinner. And it's just usually what that personal trainer likes eating. And yeah. then, it's a very robotic, logical thing of if you're a robot, you could eat this and lose weight. But people are not robots, are they? No. And that's the most important thing to understand is that you know, we could easily give out diet plans and exercise plans, but there's certain things that someone doesn't like to do. There's going to be so certain things that someone doesn't like to eat. And if I give it, it's not long term because I can give you a meal plan for like three months. Eventually, you're going to get sick of it. You know, exactly. we're human. We want different foods. We want different experiences. And so when we give the tools and strategies that we need, you can go off and you can still eat what you want to eat just exactly. within a certain limit. What do they say? Give a man a fish and he'll eat for a day. Give a man yeah. a, a fishing rod or a net, whatever, and he'll yeah. eat for his lifetime or a woman. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's all about teaching you and understanding how to eat rather than being dependent because you're dependent on the diet. It's not going to be dependent on us as coaches either. So no. it's giving you some support and teaching you and giving you the confidence and then you go off on your own, right? And you're able to yeah. then do life and think and make decisions around food and be happy and not think oh have I gone over my calories or can I eat this what is this what's in this yeah yeah awesome um so yeah one thing I just thought of like no one knows how to actually get in contact with you here so um do you have like a way of getting in contact with you um for everyone that's watching I have a Facebook profile, um, which if you're happy to do, you can always tag me in um, and then people can find me that way. If not, I was going to say they can search and eat a call, but there might be like loads of people in the search bar that come up. So they might be like there for ages scrolling through. Cool. Um, but yeah, it's one thing I will always say um, is that people sometimes think that 
you know, everything changes after 12 weeks. But one thing to always notice is that change takes time. And I think with a lot of diets out there, they promise, you know, this is what you'll definitely get in 12 weeks. And it's important to realize that once you get the wheels in motion, once you get to the bottom of it, like you, you deal with like, the emotional elements, once you've got all that in place, the change will happen and it will happen slowly, but it'll be the biggest change ever. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. So it's really nice having you on, having you interview me, Anita. Um, anything else you'd like to say before we before we go? Just that thanks for having me here. It's been amazing. And like I said to you earlier, like hearing your journey is amazing. And I, I'll say this, that there's not a lot of males that actually come out and speak about their, their journey. And to have it from a different perspective kind of shows, you know, it shows what you've been through where you've come from and it shows that the program that you've developed you've been through it it's not just you know you sat there and you wrote it out and you're like oh i'll read this textbook it's your lived experience yeah that makes sense and i think a lot of people in the diet industry like you touched on before are looking for vulnerable people or trying to make money so they'll yeah. say oh a lot of people have emotional eating i will get these people and try and help them yeah uh, and sometimes it's coming from a good place but at the same time a good place where you don't actually realize what they're doing so it's oh. very important to understand like wh why the problem is there and actually the proper way of solving it rather than trying to yeah. paper over or like you said force yourself to eat a certain way for 12 weeks and just go back to how you were before which is yeah it's gonna make you feel good for a little while but <laughs> not very long no no but yeah thank you so much for having me here uh it's been amazing no worries at all and we'll speak again soon anyone that does want to get in contact with anita i will tag her in the, the post but for now see you everyone thank you